Right, so we're gonna share something kind of cool that rolled into the shop. And this is just a bit of a teaser, so we'll come back to that later. This is our, what, 08 to 2010, 12 Malibu daily driven uh, car. Guy's a bit down on his luck, has some health issues, so this is uh, just something to help out a guy. This was not a restoration, clearly. Look at the wheels, not real nice. But it's a low mileage, older person's car, and then... Anyway, it is what it is. You can see where we got a bit of a fade line right there, or a, a tape line, I should say. So we repaired that quarter. And then we also did the bottom of the driver's door, which we came up to that line there. And then here we kind of put the line down the body line. The downside with this particular body line is it kind of goes away and it stops here and stops here. So it kind of makes it look more like the body line continues. Now we could have cleared right up the fender, but this was as fast as possible. Uh, he's picking the car up today. We didn't have it here that long. And it's also a little bit of a charity case because, well, I just said, look, I'll do the job. And we ended up doing a lot more than the quarter he wanted fixed because the doors, the fenders were all peeling. So for the little bit extra, you know, sometimes pay it forward and help somebody out. The door was all peeled and it had all these little chip spots that were blown out. So we just redid the two door bottoms at the front. The back ones are okay. He can always do them down the line. The rear quarter, absolutely perfect. There's not a mark on it. So that's basically all we did to this. It was just a, uh, we're going to possibly touch these up later we'll see he's got a touch-up marker uh, where he can fix those there's two there there's two there but the reason he bought the marker was just to make it easy to touch up this spot but because we were doing the fender I taped it in such a way we hit that too he needs the car to last two to three years so and the underneath is so 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 he'll get that out of it no sweat but I mean if you're working on your daily commuter that's 15 years old this is really all you need to do. There's nothing wrong with that. So pick it apart, do whatever you like, but it is what it is. And back to this guy. This is a 78 uh, short cab, short box Dodge. And you see the RT sticker there. And you can tell by the stickers, they've got some cracks in them. So they've likely been on there a real long while. This truck was painted back in 96 or 98, I believe he said. He's got great big turndowns coming right out at the corners. I don't like that on a lot of trucks, but it kind of suits this particular truck. Um, and he's got a little bit of cake decoration on it, which back in the 70s and 80s, you know, he's got the chrome around the lights, these trims. They kind of work on this truck. You know, these have some tarnish on them, but again, 90s so the reason it's in here we got this little spot to touch up and if you go to the back window you can see some blistering there and there the same across over there under the far corner so when it was painted it looks to me like they left the window in which is really weird but anyway the rubber's nice and soft because this doesn't sit outside like ever. So we're gonna pull the back window, clean up whatever we have to. If we can just blend the spots away, we will. And if not, we're gonna put a fade line or a, like a foam tape line all the way around the window. There's a body line there where we can hide it as much as we can, but we're just repairing that because most of the truck has held up so well that it would be stupid to go in and repaint anything. A few minor little dings, I think, in this fender. Or wobbles, whatever you want to call them, but nothing crazy. I mean, I wouldn't be redoing this truck. When we are finished our repair, you can see some chips on that door. We're going to touch those up. What's that there? There's a little chip right there. Again, black, so we'll just touch it up. It's got these cool little sporty mirrors. I have no idea what's original and what's not, but that don't matter. This is a guy's toy. He did it the way he wanted it. He's got the nice wide chrome on the drip rails. And though I'm not a fan of those marker lights, uh, 
Some guys are, but at the time, this is what people did with these. So it also has beautiful, super wide Prater wheels, but not crazy wide. Like they just tuck in under the fender. Like they're in just enough that you won't chip the hell out of the box. But they're, you know, plenty of meat. And then he's got kind of your average seven or eight inch on the front. All BF Goodrich tires. We all know that uh, that 440 is probably not an original decal for the truck. So that 440 is there because it's like camouflage so that people don't know that there's a uh, one of those uh, leaning tower of power slant sixes under the hood. <clears throat> I'm just kidding about that, by the way. I'll show you what's under the hood. Um, it's got these, which I think are really, really unique. So these plastic lenses and this little teacup handle See, this one's missing. We're gonna remake those at some point. We've got to find some blue, some blue plastic, make lenses to fit these. And when your headlights are on, you got this little blue glow above them, which just makes that the chrome eyelids kind of kind of glow. And he's got a pretty okay grill in it. Like it's very straight. There's some nicks and stone chips, but not very much, realistically. It's actually that's pretty good. And he, he drives this truck around, so it doesn't just go to car shows and stuff. This is like a, a weekend car show and driver for a guy. It's got a real nice pinstripe running down it that just, you know, it's just the right amount of... Anyway, let me back way up. So there's a few things that you wouldn't do maybe modern day, like the roof lights and whatever's across the box, but... You know, if you were driving around back in the late 80s, early 90s, and you had a 10 or so year old truck, this is sort of the look of the time that you'd do to it. And a lot of them were overdone. Where this one, to me anyway, I think it looks pretty good. And I'm one of those clean look guys. I don't like to put anything on my trucks. Like I'd even go as far as welding the state pockets shut if I were building one. But uh, if I bought one that looked exactly like this, I'd just kind of clean it up and keep it the way it is. It, it kind of earned its... It's life being the way it is, but it's nice. He's even got the uh, stickers still on the gas cap. A lot of guys just put the full chrome ones on just to clean it up. But if you had this truck and you were a young lad and you bought it when it was 10 years old and you made a little bit of money working all summer, this might be how you would do up a truck like this. He's got fairly clean door panels, a little bit of elbow rub and wear there. But uh, real nice dash. Everything is clean. Now, this guy takes a lot of his old cars, and if he has any weird issues with the dash, he sends them out to a guy somewhere. I think he's in southern Ontario. And he goes through them, and he rebuilds the clocks and everything. And, you know, so... Oh, it's got the extra pedal, hence the leaning tower of power uh, four-speed truck with a real nice chromed pistol grip. See so yeah, how the shifter comes off the side of the tunnel. And uh, this is how he had the seats upholstered, which look really good with the interior. But they kind of class it up. Like, I, I think this is, I guess it's probably a really thick vinyl, but it's, it's nicely done. Looks really good. That stuff all looks okay. Threw the big tack up there because he kept everything original here. And I don't know if these ever had a tack. They may have. They could have lost the clock. But see, his clock is turning just fine. And he says when he gets those redone, where he sends them out, they come back. He goes, they keep time and they seem to work good forever thereafter. If you're not uh, lazy, you can do some work with this thing, throw a trailer on it. And if it's got brakes, would you look at that? There's wood grain on that brake thing. Um, I was curious, and uh, I believe he said that worked. He said everything on this truck works. And you can see, you know, no signs of uh, Bondo bucketness. So this started out as a really clean truck. I think he said he bought it around 96 or 94. And between 96 and 98, he had it, well, he did most of the work to it, but he had a lot of it redone. So now that you know it's a four gear, I'm going to set you down for a minute. Ok, 
Okay. Up goes the hood. Now, the thing I like with this guy is when he redoes stuff or has stuff redone, and the bottom of the hood is painted the same as the truck, which is nice. It's not just spray bombed, which there's nothing wrong with that, but it's kind of a nice thing to do. And it's just shiny enough. Oh, that it really shows off the jewelry under the hood. It's got the big alternator on it by the looks of it. Chrome. Power steering bracket over there is chrome. And he's a big fan of the Mopar Direct connection. Uh, up here in Canada, you can, I think it's down in Peterborough area, you get it all from a place called Moparts. But, uh, so I'm sure a lot of this stuff is right. And if you can't get Dodge on a bigger intake, you can get Edelbrock. I'm a Holly guy, but he likes Edelbrock. And I mean, I'm good either way, to be honest. I just run whatever. It's got one hell of a, it's like a mini train horn and it's nothing crazy. But uh, when he pulled it in yesterday, he kind of honked it at me and it, it, uh, it'll get your attention. And I'm going to have to find the button to see what this one does. It has, uh, runs off a little air pump, I think. So we'll try that out. But, you know, original plastic coolant thing and washer fluid. You can replace all these now with like a uh, repops and they're like a clean white plastic. But if you have one that's good and original, a lot of guys like to keep them on. Now he goes out of his way to try to find this style of battery. They are a little more money, but they look a little more like the seventies. So that's kind of cool. Like he likes those little things. So the 440, what is it? Well, years and years ago, the satellite that the man owns, the yellow one, you can see videos on the sport satellite we did. He ran that car, I believe, with this 440, which I believe he said was either a 70 or a 69 440 Commando, which we believe was a Roadrunner engine. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that's what he said. So this, the transmission, and something about the gearing is basically like you're in a 6970 Roadrunner 440 with a four speed in this truck. And that's what this truck is. It doesn't have a modified crazy suspension or anything like that. Now, if it looks like it's sitting a little low, and here's another quick little preview of things to come. This is an old uh, 455. There's the air breather. He just pulled that off not to damage it. It had been in storage in a van for about 10 years. There's the transmission. There's an issue with the transmission. We got to put a, an ear on here. So I'm going to get that fixed. And usually I know a guy who will actually weld these fairly well. And basically you'll have enough grip here when it's pinned and bolted everywhere that all you want is for your bolt to have a washer to push tight here so the piece you put on is more of a filler piece so if you had the original piece you know but anyway I know a guy that can he's a way better welder than I am he uh, I'll take it to him and get him to put a nub on there and again it's just to make sure that that this fatness goes all the way around more so than because you're not pulling up and down you're just keeping it this way tight to the motor so there's enough meat there you could probably not do nothing but We'll uh, get a piece on there. So this is your turbo 400 short tail off of a 455 four barrel. Um, the motor was pulled years ago and they needed the flywheel. And uh, everything else, as far as I know, like even the alternator is still on it. It's missing the cap and wires. And the reason he put this away was because this came out of a perfectly great running car. Um, I'm not going to try to get this running just to see what happens. I noticed the base gasket is missing under the carburetor. So the engine had some uh, aftermarket carburetor on it. Um, and the guy put the original back on because I think what this was, he believes this was in a GS, a Buick GS. And what they had done is the guy had a built motor so he took this stock motor out and took a few toys off it to put in his built motor 
and then they put the original carburetor back on and it's just sitting on there with the bolts finger tight uh, and he didn't have another flywheel for whatever reason like even the mounts are kind of on there and stuff like that the manifolds are there like it's it's pretty complete but it has been sitting in a van for a long time he thought he flooded it he usually pours oil down the carburetor and uh, snuffs them out before he pulls them we're obviously gonna have to take all the pulleys and sandblast them repaint them clean them up the power steering gear and stuff well, you can tell it's an earlier model right look at the pulley on that so that's kind of cool but uh he said there was something weird about the intake so you can see it doesn't have the pollution stuff coming out of these so it is an earlier engine i'll have to get the numbers to confirm um it was an ac car at first i thought pollution pump and he said no he goes this would have been an ac car but even though it has the old school manifolds, you know, without all the uh, metal tubing spaghetti coming out of them, the intake is a little suspect because it seems to have an EGR valve, which to me would be like, what, 72, 74, somewhere around there or newer. Now, that being said, I really don't care because we're going to refresh the engine. I'm going to take the pan off, check the bearings, check everything out. It's probably going to need rings and a hone job. Um, Performance-wise, we'll do a mild cam. I'm going to probably try one of those brawler carburetors just because I'm curious. That being said, I might open this carb up. If it's super clean inside, we'll put a rebuild kit in it. I'm familiar with doing that. I did a lot of them back in the 90s when I was young. So uh, water pump, I mean, either it'll work or it won't. But Depending on prices stuff, I might just go crazy and spend a few thousand bucks on it, refresh everything, put new stuff on it. I mean, we don't care about the alternator. They ran double and double down there and a single up there off the back of that one. But the doubles often were used because they also came up over here. And like I say, he, he was pretty certain this came out of a fully loaded GS that had AC in it. And he remembered that, or at least he thinks he remembers that, because he said, you know, that was kind of a rare, I just had this on there to keep rain out. I had to back it outside and pull it back in. But carburetor's all there with every stitch of everything on it. Except right here, they unhooked the, uh, the little heat riser. Everything else is there. So that can all be cleaned up and rebuilt and what have you. And honestly, I take a lot of the auto stuff off and I make them manually. You know, I like to build them a little more like dirt track race car style and make them go fast. Uh, it's like a friend of mine said to me a couple of years ago, we were talking about taking out a small engine and my Firebird and putting in a big engine. He said, I wonder what that'll do to gas mileage. And he kind of giggled and I looked at him. He said, do you really care? And it took me a second to realize, nope. <laughs> Um, burn the fuel, it don't matter. And if you need overdrive, pull the tail, do the gear driver over that, what is it? Mm. Gear vendors overdrive. It's the word I'm looking for. Uh, and then of course you're going to have to shorten your drive shaft, but I've got a shop close by that can do that. So I'm not too worried about that. Starter still on it. Plug wires still on it. So like I say, they stole a few things that were probably new, like the cap and rotor or whatever. And then this is like, you know, 10 or more years ago. But uh, it is what it is. And this guy doesn't keep anything unless it was good. So when he says, I have this and it's good, I'll bring it to you. And the reason why, if you look across the yard, Sorry about that. That's a, uh, well, what looks to be a 66 Buick. And this one, let me shrink that down. It's way too shaky that way. We'll just come up on it. This is my personal toy. It does run and drive. Yeah, it's got the uh, crusty you look at the wheels, you'll see they're uh, that charcoal Camaro color. They were on a charcoal colored Z28 
then somebody bought them, put them on an S10, which never made the road, and then I bought them off that guy. So we got to do a lot of quarter work on the car. We're going to do a trunk floor uh, with all the supports underneath the trunk floor. I bought all that. So we have all that. As you can see, the trunk lid, it's not really pitted or anything, just the paint was bad. We peeled it off, so we're going to have to treat that, that up around here. The doors are pretty good. There was a ding there that was filled and it cracked so I peeled it out. At least it's open so you can see what's there. I've had this car a while stashed up in the other garage. You can see the bottom of the fender. Um, we're gonna have to fix that. Now the underside of the car it needs one floor pan on the driver's side. Everything else is absolutely perfect underneath as far as floors go except the trunk. So this was a Western car from British Columbia. It was a big wow here and it's full of Bondo, but either we'll fix the skin or we'll, we'll see what's there and then we'll know what to do. Probably just have to straighten it out and clean it up. This quarter, although it looks a little better, that whole bottom is uh, full of filler. So we'll probably cut that out, remake all that, remake all the lips. You can kind of buy these quarters, but they're usually not pressed or, or formed. They're more like machine formed and they, they bead them in. So they're not really great. And I do have a set of those, but I'm going to cut those up, use what I need, reshape things. And as for those arches, I'm going to have to totally make those, which honestly, that'll be fun to do because it'll make for some fun videos. The bumper's got some issues, so we're going to pull that straight to where we like it. We're going to cut there, re-weld that. We're going to lose the chrome, and it's going to be color matched to the car. We're going to lose all that trim chrome because I just don't want it on there. Again, I like the clean look. Um, I do have Buick Special chrome moldings that go from here there, and they just sort of spear on each end of the fender. They don't go all the way down the car. And sadly, one of them's got a screw hole in it. I guess one of the clips was off. But uh, we're going to fill them, and I think we're going to paint those an off color of the car. And because I have doubles of all the trim, we're going to do that as well. We were thinking of doing the car black and doing like champagne metallic trims. But we'll see how that goes. But anyway, it's got a running 350 in it. Buick 350 from the early 70s. And it's a running driving car, but if you're going to build it and take the body off the frame and do what I want to do, we're not going to waste our time with a 350. We're going to put the 455 Buick in it. Because, I mean, it's a toy. We won't drive it every day. And because of that, we don't care about gas. Anyway, just figured I'd share this truck. It's a really cool truck. If it was a sunny day, I'd take a better video of it outside, but maybe I'll do a couple shorts tomorrow or the next day or something if the sun comes out. Let's back away. What a beautiful truck. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers.